So my background is um, I studied science and then electronics, and then I kind of discovered my creative side. And I've been on this journey towards creativity ever since. Um, and I think science and creativity are, are very much the same things. They're just like different, different sides of a coin. Um, but so what, what I do, what me and my team do, is we're kind of on a journey to, to figure out how to create technology for the future where we can make everyday things magical and no longer look like pieces of technology. So I'll show you one of the things that we created. Um, which is, it's really hard to, hang on. So this is a poster, and it's a, a poster we did with a music studio, and it's an intergalactic alien um, music remixing rap battle. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Okay, I'm going to use this as well. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So I don't know if you can hear that. So when you touch it, it triggers these different sound loops. And then you touch these little characters. Oh, okay. You can't hear it. I'm not sure if you can hear it. A little corny and a turny and a turny, even though. Excuse me, Ankle butt, say it, ankle butt, say ankle butt, say it. I could pass it around and you can play with it. <laughs> It might, be, <laughs> it might be more interesting than, than me because I never know what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> and I get to blame it for distractions. Okay. Um, so I did this talk a few years ago um, and um, I decided to make some DJ decks out of a piece of paper. And then DJ Cubert saw what I did in the talk, and he's probably the best scratch DJ in the world. Um, and he, he <laughs> oh. um, so he asked if we could put this in his album cover. And these are probably, well, I say they're the world's thinnest DJ decks because they're just a piece of paper. So um, I, I, I tell my kids that I travel the world and DJ to thousands of people, but I'm not really a DJ. I DJ for like 10 seconds. Um, and I also say that on paper, I'm the best DJ in the world. <laughs> um, yeah, so. I'm coming through. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming through with you, Jitsu. 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 Um, and you can, <laughs> usually on a good day, you can scratch the decks. Um, and it's just a piece of paper. Um, <laughs> and it's, this is my favourite noise. Um, I love an air horn. Um, okay. <laughs> I'll just try and show something else. Um, yeah, so I make all of these all of these everyday things somehow interactive, but just really using what's around us already. Um, I'll show you my baseball cap, which is kind of fun. I have no sense of time, so sorry. But, yeah, so this is my DJ hat, and then um, <laughs> and it's like building up and it's getting closer to the drop and you just feel that at the drop you just want to hit that air horn it's like <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think maybe I'm not sure if I'm the only one that kind of feels that but I, I, <laughs> I just feel that like everything around me should be connected and interactive and magical and when I walk down the street I want it to, I want it to play music or if I touch the cover of a book I want it to do things and in my mind that's what's really happening <laughs> um, I'll, I'll show you something else that we made. Um, let's see if this will work. Um, so this is we did a I did a workshop at TED last year and I tried to do a remix of an Ed Sheeran song and kind of stick the song bits of the song on the cover of this book, which is the the is the book for Ted, last year's TED. Um, um, but I'm not a musician, but I'd had a go at chopping it up. So we put some of the different loops there, some vocals there. The club isn't the best place to find the lovers of the bar is where I go. Mm -hmm. 
me and my friends at the table doing shots, drinking fast, and then we um, talk slow. Other bits of the track. Mm -hmm. Come over and start up a conversation with just me, and trust me, I'll give it a chance. Now take my hand, stop the pen, the man on the jukebox, and then I really and like and start to dance and my little version. Did I make? Um, oh, I was going along to speak to some people at NASA, and I thought it'd be fun if I made something. And I made this on the morning, just like on the way, um, or just before we left. It's just a little poster. Um, my colleagues um, put some put some nice graphics together. Um, let's see if I can get this to work. Mm. Have to bear with me. I never know what's going to work. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, it's just, we just did a little poster of three sound effects. Two, and put one, the poster. zero, zero, and liftoff! Liftoff, Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. And then I believe it, 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 it's about empowering people to be creative rather than having to learn technical skills, skills to create things. So we make these tools that let people do things. And I just remember to have a little video of something that maybe I'll show you. Um, so someone was um, interning and then used our kit to make something. And um, let me see if I can find this. And she made this and it, I don't, it was just really beautiful and it made me cry and then I never know what to say after it. But. <laughs> People ask me if I can make anything, what would it be? And it wouldn't really be a thing. It would be, I want to make a toolkit and a process and that anybody can use to make anything magical and interactive and then see the things that, that they create. Um, and, and so that's when I saw that, something else that someone had made, it, it, it just, it, it was just such, such a great feeling. Um, so um, as, as Matt mentioned, like, I think we, we ended up talking about um, chopping wood and, and those sorts of things. So I thought I'd just tell you a little bit of a story about um, some other things that I like to do, which is I'm quite obsessed with going camping and, and, and hiking. Um, maybe I'll find some photos and show you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I went, I, went, um, I went camping in the Mojave Desert um, and, and took a selfie with, I'm sure you can see that. Oh, maybe you can't see it. Uh. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> anyway, took a selfie with the Milky Way. And I go camping a lot um, and sleep out in the woods. And then, and then, you know, sometimes I'll like, I'll hike for like five hours and then gather wood for an hour and then chop the wood. And, and then it's like minus five and I'm terrified of bears and things. And then I'm like sitting there with this cup of tea that I've made that I spent out, you know, like hours getting to, to the point. And then I'll just go, why did I not just sit at home, make a cup of tea? <laughs> Make the kettle on, like, like, what, why, why, why do I do this? And so, I also talk to myself a lot, which is, <laughs> which is and then I talk to myself about talking to myself <laughs> <laughs> in front of lots of people. Um, <laughs> um, and what I kind of realised is that is that building friction into our lives is incredibly important. Since the beginning of time, we've tried to remove friction from our lives, from you know, discovering, recreating fire and a plough and a printing press. But we've got to the point in our lives where there's so little friction in our lives that we no longer feel 
that we have a purpose and that we need to be part of our lives. And so it made me realize that going on these journeys and, and doing things and building friction back into, back into our, our, our lives is, is incredibly important. And I think it's an incredibly important part of, of how we think. Um, and so it made me think I want to make products that make people's lives more difficult rather than make people's lives easier. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, um, another thing that I started to realize was that I was missing the forest a lot, and that the forest is actually my mind. Um, and that when I was going on a journey through the forest, the forest trail was like the groove in a record. I am like the needle, and as I like step over the logs and walk through the water and like watch out for bears and things, um, like that puts thoughts into my head, and the thoughts I have in my head. Um, it's like the music on the record as I go through the groove of, of my life. And so I realized that everything around us, everything we do, everyone around us, every journey we take, all of those things are actually our mind and they are how we think. If you say to someone, where do you have your best ideas? They might say in the shower or having a walk. So how can our environment not be our mind? And so I believe that we have an inner mind that's in our body, mostly centered about our head, and we have an outer mind, an outer mind that's everything around us. And we connect our inner and outer mind, um, connect our inner and outer mind together through our senses to create a full mind. And that's what makes us, us mindful. And so it's really important to cu curate your environment. And then I just started to think about what does that say for, for children in a school if that school is their mind? What does that say for people in a prison if the prison becomes their mind? We don't really think about curating those spaces as, as if they, they are part of us, but they're in, it, they are an incredibly important part of, of who we are, and so I start to pay a lot more attention to that. Um, I'll just show you one more demo. Um, I think I'm out of time, but um, hopefully just one more thing. Oh yeah, I forgot, I was looking for it. It's actually my notebook. <laughs> um, and then we can go and get our lunch, hopefully. Um, so this is a notebook for songwriters. Um, so you can be writing the, the idea of your song, and then you fold out and there's a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, so you can be writing your song, a few notes, or you can fold it back. So I sit there on the plane and get my laptop open and I pretend I'm, I, I can't create music or anything. I just like to sit there and pretend that I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe there's someone that can make it. But, but the idea is, is that the objects around us just become connected and magical. They've all, these things are all part of who we are. They are part of, of, of how we think. Um, and I believe the future will look more like the past than the present, where everything is magical and technology has disappeared into all of the things around us. Um, and my goal is to be the Mary Poppins of technology, where I just wave my magic wand. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and these are the things I want to create. I, I want, I, I'm interested in not changing the world, but I'm interested in working with people who want to build the world that we want to live in in the future and create this magical place where we recognize that everything is connected and we are all just one, one mind together. So thank you very much. <laughs>